as we reported last night, the direct death of Marine Hollington brought the total number of British fatalities in this conflict to 300. A toll we know tonight has sadly already been passed. Today, the most senior British officer here, Lieutenant General Nick Parker, Deputy Commander of ISAF, has been writing in the Times, urging the public to hold its nerve. He says soldiers do not want sympathy, but instead public support. As I was reporting last night, the toll does spell out how, certainly in some places, the conflict here can be truly ferocious. But tonight, my colleague Tim Cooper looks at the measures that are being taken to try to mitigate the dangers. Britain's deployment to Afghanistan in 2001 meant equipment and training techniques had to change for a new terrain and determined enemy, well-versed in protracted guerrilla warfare. But it was the shift to Helmand province in 2006 which saw a trickle of new developments change to a flood. Pretty quickly it became clear that snatched Land Rovers, first designed for Northern Ireland, offered limited protection against improvised explosive devices. An uprated model, the Snatch Vixen, offered improved protection. But it was in 2007 that a real step forward came with the Mastiff. The original variant, and now Mastiff 2, have a V-shaped hull, helping deflect a blast outwards away from occupants. Many troops say the vehicle has saved their lives. New vehicles are continuing to come online, the Jackal, Ridgeback and Panther. And now this, the latest, the Husky, all designed for this terrain and the threats within it. New body armour was introduced for British troops in late 2005. Osprey offered superior protection compared to the previous combat body armour, but suffered criticism from troops for being uncomfortable and poorly built. An updated variant followed, with a third due later this year. Although they offer the same protection level, they've addressed some of the initial concerns. Helicopters like the improved Lynx 9A have been redesigned to cope with the hot and high conditions experienced here. This June, Major General Andrew McKay said British forces went into Helmand province with their eyes shut and fingers crossed. That's been denied by the MOD, but it's certainly true that how we do things here now compared to 2006 is considerably different. When it comes to tackling the IED threat, personnel are now trained from the very start of their careers. In theatre, continued developments see a wide armoury of techniques to deal with improvised bombs, as Prime Minister David Cameron saw on his recent visit here. Making sure, and we will do this, we double the number of IED teams so that when you go out on patrol, when you're out of the bases, out of the fobs, you're getting proper protection. Building relationships with local people, though, is crucial and doesn't need specialist kit, but does take time. When it works, it pays dividends. This man trusts ISAF to an extent where he recently alerted them to an IED. So we should inform the ISAF force because they are here to support us, to support our country and to teach our children, to buy our schools and they are helping us, they are aiding us. So we should inform them. And it's that partnership with the people, the crucial partnership with the people which unlocks the goldmine of intelligence which just makes the place safer for everyone. Away from the front line, post-tour systems are now in place to help personnel. The TRIM scheme provides peer group support, helping people of all ranks cope with potential trauma post-Afghanistan. The treatment process is another area that continues to adapt and excel, meaning more troops are surviving serious injury in the 21st century than at any time in our history. Tim Cooper, Forces News, Afghanistan.